Joining me now is Kaylee McGee-White. Kaylee, Harris has made her campaign all about vibes, but I, I don't think it seems to be working. What say you? No, where's all the joy, Stuart? Where, where did it all go? And, you know, this shouldn't surprise anyone. And it's really remarkable because we're watching the Kamala Harris campaign repeat the exact same mistakes that Hillary Clinton made back in 2016. The only difference is that this time, at least some Democrats are willing to recognize that. But Kamala Harris and then Hillary Clinton before her both wrongly assumed that they could build a coalition of voters whose sole political priority was stopping Donald Trump. But it turns out that it's not enough to just be not Trump. Voters actually want solutions. And more than that, they want their problems to be heard in the first place. They want their voices to be recognized. And Kamala Harris still fa she fails to provide substantive answers on the major policy issues of the day. And that's a huge problem, especially in the swing states such as my home state of Michigan. But Trump, on the other hand, he seems to have real momentum. Does that momentum carry through to the election, which is only slightly over three weeks away? It certainly seems to. I think that it's important to recognize that Trump is polling better than he ever has. Back yep. in 2020 yes. and 2016, he was barely ahead. And so in order to believe that the polls are somehow, uh, you, you know, less accurate than they were back then, you would also have to believe that the pollsters have suddenly figured out the average Trump voter and that they're trying to understand those voters. I don't think that's true. I think the same mistakes are being made today. And in that case, Trump is probably doing astronomically better than he was in 2016 and 2020. Well, we've got uh, polls that show Trump winning in Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, and Nevada. They are very much swing states. And look at this. Uh, the new polling shows Republicans appear to be poised to take control of the Senate. Montana, Florida, Texas, they're leaning firmly now for the Republicans. Now, that would be a really big win for the GOP, even if they don't get the White House, right? Absolutely. I think the betting markets have the odds of the Republicans retaking the Senate at about 77 percent right now. So that's how confident voters are that Republicans will retake the Senate. They really only need three, three seats to do that. Uh, they yeah. look to have those seats, and that doesn't include some of the really close races such as back in Michigan between Mike Rogers and Alyssa Slotkin. And if Trump overperforms in those states, he could carry those candidates across the line, and it could be a blowout win for the GOP across the board. Okay. We'll, only time will tell, and we shall see. Kenny McGee-White, thanks for joining us.